Welcome to a new episode of Say What. In this episode we're going to focus on the Norwegian artist Petter Agard, aka Galactic Funk, aka Positivity. We had a conversation with uh, Peter a few months ago, then mainly from a fan perspective. This cause we have known each other for several years, uh, traveling as funkaholics around Europe, seeing the legends and the prince in particular. And certainly I have been aware of Peter's talent, of course. I have also been involved in making and arranging gigs with his former band Glam Slam here in Sweden and so on. But somehow, after all, I was probably a bit blind for exactly how great his talent was. The longer we talked, the more it emerged that Peter's story does not fit as a short feature around fans and concerts. But he needs a completely separate episode by his own. Yeah. Say what? Once the interview legends, as we did with Eric Leeds a few episodes ago, but also those who carry on the legacy. And by Scandinavian standards, we find few that have uh, done more than Pito to pass the legacy of soul and funk music. Books, concerts, albums, TV shows, musicals. There's not much Peter can't do and with quality as well, big quality. So sit back and enjoy a musical portrait of the Scandinavian Prince of the Funk, Peter Hogar. <laughs> To the say what pod and podcast. Um, what say what say what say, say what, what say what. what. <laughs> <laughs> so-
for the listeners outside of uh, Scandinavia. Uh, Petter is uh, uh, well known in Scandinavia and Norway in particular as theater, producer, musician, singer and a lot of that uh, and have uh, won a few prizes and uh, also been involved in this Shakadelica book and uh, a tribute tour and there's a lot of interesting topics your way into the entertainment is industry if there is a elevator pitch of that <laughs> and uh, oh and, yeah so uh, I can, yeah i can uh, make the really long story short by um, saying that um, my whole family are musicians so um, they never gave me a football they, they gave me instruments, they gave me a microphone, so I never really had any choice. Luckily for me, I enjoyed the, the music, so uh, very, very early on I was introduced, I mean like five, six, seven years old, I was introduced to ABBA, you know, and uh, the Beatles, and you know, the, the really beautiful vinyl collection of my mom and dad, and I still actually have that collection, and it still intrigues me to this day. Was you know it evolved in me getting more um, lead roles in musicals basically. I even did a musical in Sweden. Um, you know the Saturday Night Fever musical. I did a full tour of Sweden mm. as uh, <laughs> and um, well, well basically. So I was gone a lot, traveling a lot, and suddenly I did concerts uh, in uh, Krakow together with this uh, amazing jazz saxophone player called Wendy uh, Kovsat. He used to work in New York with. Uh, with those big, big shot fellows. So suddenly I was living in Krakow for six months doing jazz, opera, funk music, you know, like experimental. And so I, I basically become uh, this kind of like this bachelor, uh, only like suddenly I did the musical The Full Monty, where I basically was a stripper for six months, like nude on the, on the stage. It's very good therapy, by the way, to just <laughs> go on stage in front of 500 people and just be buck naked. It really gives you some uh, confidence. So basically, I, I, I'm not I had afraid to... of anything after that. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're going to do it with movements. So I'm going to record this motherfucker. Okay. Uh, let me give you a piece of Norwegian wisdom. Dog said to little baby pal Why you run around in circles Your head will get messed up Big mama dog said to little baby pal Why you run around in circles All the one Two, three, ow I try to catch a tail I don't want to shoot Mama said slow down puppy Or the tail will follow you Demo ikke stresses, demo ikke streves, må pokalene, må aldri hevde. Ho! Big mama dog said. I saw you live in Sweden here in Malmö and I think your uh, tribute is one of the best I've ever seen actually. I think you're uh, with the jungle up dance and everything, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. The place was jumping. Yeah, right. the place yeah. was jumping. Oh, the people are still Thanks talking so much. about it actually. Because in 1988, as I said, I was 10 years old and all the other Prince fans that I knew about was like, almost 10 years older than me. Mm. So I, I very, very fast got a, a very mature taste in music. And 
thank God for that because thanks to Prince, he introduced me to Johnny Mitchell, Carlos Santana, Slide Back to Dome, Parliament Funkadelic. You know. at least when I was 10 years old, you were not really allowed to listen to Prince. You were, oh, no. <laughs> he, was, he was the dangerous he was one. He was supposed to like Madonna, Wham, Michael Jackson and Carola here yes. in Sweden. So I was considered a bit odd. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can relate yeah. to that, maybe. I, 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 was definitely, I, I was definitely considered uh, very much odd uh, by my friends at the time. I, I remember very well that um, uh, I was the only one in my entire school that um, uh, uh, loved the music of that uh, skinny motherfucker with a high voice. as far and i'm not making myself a victim now but i'm just telling it as it was that that was enough reason to get bullied back in the uh, late 80s early 90s because if you like a weird guy clearly clearly you must be weird yourself and yeah. I, I don't know in retrospect maybe they were right but you know i i, I just felt like you know as a heterosexual man mm. and just watch looking at the love sexy album cover for the first time i remember so much thinking oh man that guy is brave that was my first uh, initial yeah. thought but i got a little funny story maybe i'm uh, crossing uh, changing the subject but i, I remember uh, in 1998 uh, in uh, a nightclub in stockholm called uh, cafe opera i met prince and uh, the story is 
not nice at all, but still it was a huge um, uh, wow moment for mm. me. Basically what happened was I got I got access into the VIP section of Cafe Opera in Stockholm yeah. because I was this cool kid with long dark hair with some purple stripes and and he looked at me in the most how what should I what word should I pick in the in the most unflattering way. He looked at me like in a very rude way, like oh my god, here's another uh, fanatic kind of guy staring me in the eyes, want to say hello and. And I was taking a bite. This maybe lasted for like two, three seconds. And I immediately like, oh shit, I don't want to be that guy. I, I want to be like the musicians. He want. I, I, I want to be the male Nika Costa. You know what I mean? I, I yeah. want to be. I want to be like the, um, uh, the, the the cool guy. I, I want to be like Macy, uh, Macy Gray. You know, like the, the yeah. funk guy who he likes. It's the creative process. That's something. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's like wow. And I can see I can relate to that as well. That like, no, let's do it. I'm not. Let's try it. There's no boundaries. Just do it. Yeah, the, I, I'm so happy you said that because uh, what happened? Um, I kind of got insulted that he mm. didn't even want to talk to me. He, I remember he, he was sitting like in this corner with beautiful Latino women. He he got irritated just by mm. having me in the same room. So basically, I got this fuck you attitude, and uh, I went straight home. He he saw me in the, the cafe opera like so now like oh fuck I don't want to be a part of this my, myself I just walked away and th that intrigued him so basically when I met him in Copenhagen the next day he he pointed at me like you go up on stage and you know I, I would do that thing and then I got invited to the Vega after show but basically to make a really long story short when I got back to Norway I tore down all the Prince posters I had on my wall. And on from that day on, I decided I'm going to be a musician myself because I don't. I he basically helped me with his insults to show push me in my creative direction by being uh, a cool dude myself, not just copying him. So it was a mind blowing experience. And since that uh, August day, 1998, I've been a musician myself full time. after Prince left this world, we started to work on this uh, uh, album together because we got inspired by the loss of him. So I can say that it's available uh, on Spotify, right? And, uh, it's available on Spotify and, uh, to make it really cheesy, uh, purple vinyl. Of course. <laughs> of course. It's kind of big in Prince world. And I can say so basically, uh, those tracks, they're, they're a real party. It's, it's groovy, so just check it out for those who haven't. Thank you. Behind every great man is a woman rolling her eyes. You know, Prince is up there in talent. I I'm like 2% of what he can do. But actually, it was the next year, 1999, when the artist Beck released his uh, album Midnight Vultures. That was the uh, ping in my mind when I realized, oh my God, I can do it my own way. Because I thought I can't do it like Prince, but Beck is such a genius because he did the Prince album in his way. Like a blue-eyed boy screaming with the with a kind of cheesy falsetto voice that he has, but he made it his own. There's probably amazing album. Yeah. yeah, amazing album. There's
can't just n- knock my head into the wall when I can't do concerts. You have to create. And who was the guy who taught me that? That was Prince. Oh, yeah. That's why it's not a solo project. It's not Galactic Funk. It's the Bump Squad. The bump. bump music. B U M P. We have got a glimpse from your professional side, the way you have adapted the prints into your, your work and made it some kind of yeah. mission, but with the great combination of your talent as well. So it, it became very, very, very profound and very nice. Uh, and uh, you also touched on the highlights when you met him, of course, and what it yeah, yeah. But I would like to come back to something with, because I know you have seen a lot of concerts and we have met over the years. And I, I remember Montreux, we met, I also think in, North Sea, we had this uh, oh, yeah. kind of strange, uh, I know we had this discussion in North Sea because the first concert, you weren't that so, s- the first concert in the North Sea Jazz Festival, uh, we didn't thought it was the best one really, but, oh, but the then, second one however, the second one is on the other hand one of the best ever with the joint repetition. Uh, of the best rooms ever. Could it- One of the best ever. It, it, it was just, uh, I was uh, standing on my toes yeah. the entire, I couldn't go down because I didn't want to miss a thing. I'm, I'm still thinking about that night too in, yeah. um, in we, North Sea. We City. were all like, just astounded. The, the way he yes. performed during repetition, when we danced yes. close and slow, and it was like, and, and I've seen a lot of shows, but that was like, oh, yeah. Oh Those yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I remember it so well. And when you put on the bass and started with "Dear Mr. Man" and stuff, I, I... y'all are right. Um, and this book is like one kilo heavy and we got a lot of praise. We, we worked, we, we sat down for like six months and worked on this. Took me and Christoph Falk, my very good friend. Still, we made this five CD box 
with 81 Norwegian artists that are uh, doing Prince songs, you know, it's like amazing. You this is your table, isn't it? Because you have this in his car. T oh, <laughs> yeah. And I was so sad to hear that Prince didn't really uh, appreciate it. Oh no, not at all, not at all. Around it, so please tell me more because uh, I, uh, well, I do really like a, f a few of them. Doing uh, the one. Uh, oh yeah, Jarl Barnoff, and may, one of the best soul singers in Norway, or, or maybe the best soul singer. You got the entire symphony orchestra to play the one. And um, then the, the cool thing about I, I, I can kind of like turn it into a happy story because, of course, we got contacted by his lawyers. And being the chronicle positive dude that I am, I told my friend, he said, okay, so they're suing us, but that's kind of cool. That means that they know who we are. You know, I was like kind of turning it positive. I thought yeah, that's kind cool. of fun. And of course, the, 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 the lawyer threats. The lawsuit threats, it did, it uh, even uh, ended up being nothing, uh, but we couldn't uh, release it in Japan and America. But the, the, but the cool thing is that there's one song um, that is called uh, Paisley Park. <laughs> you know about that the, the title. And there's yeah. this beautiful uh, lady called um, Anne Maria Almedal who made this soft ballad version of Paisley Park. And um, Dr. Fink called my friend Pista Falk late that night one uh, one time after the release and like oh my god that paste the part version is better than the original version you know she really got the the message wow. and the lyrics and the meaning and um and uh, so we had done it live a couple times together with her and uh, it that even was, went that be the best review ever to have dr fink oh. coming up yeah well it, it didn't stop there even prince started to hear it and started to kind of tweet about it unofficially through the Thry girl girls and stuff like that so so in, in many ways uh, he 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 didn't like the concept on paper but when the, it, it, when it eventually reached him uh, in his ears he like oh it's because I, I mean not not to brag but uh, Scandinavian musicians are very very talented the, the, the Swedish and Norwegian and Danish are, are uh, having uh, so many talented musicians, so the quality is always great. So. To this place in your heart, Paisley Park is in your heart. Paisley Park is in your heart. Appreciated. Yeah, you know, we, we decided to just rent the biggest concert, uh, one of the biggest concert hall in Oslo, and just call up all those 81 artists that was on this box, plus some extra, and basically make make them play all this live. And we managed to get the, the national broadcasting Norwegian broadcasting company, uh, network to film it, and it got played like five times on on the on, on the television and I mean it it will eventually be fixed but um, I, I, I work as a musician full-time and all my concerts since March have more or less been cancelled I, I, I actually had a concert last night that's why my voice is a little sore today but, um, but uh, today, you know live streams that's the only way
for watching. Follow us on social media and stay tuned for the next episode.